This video is going to be all about harness hardware. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. And welcome back to this number 31 in our series of quick tips videos, where I try and cram as much of my scuba diving knowledge on a given topic about scuba diving equipment into a video five minutes or less. And today, I am going to give you in detail breakdown of all the hardware you need to build a harness for a backplate and wing system. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the different types of hardware you need, the materials that they're made from and why you should choose one over the other and the correct assembly of all the different parts. Later in this video I'm going to be teaching you how you can assemble a complete harness for 42 United States dollars so you're not going to want to miss that. This video is really aimed at people putting together their first backplate and wing setup so if that's you make your next dive on our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future content and we'll head over to the workbench and break it down. So let's look at the different designs for the components of harness hardware. If you're looking at a simple what's known as a Hogarthian style harness we're really talking about three different pieces of hardware. We're talking about a quick release buckle, we're talking about D-ring and we're talking about sliders which are sometimes known as weight retainers. Um, the buckle itself we're all familiar with, quick release style. Um, one thing I will say is whenever I'm looking at either a new harness system, a new backplate and wing or even a jacket style BCD, I'll find that my eyes will first wander to the belt buckle and if the belt buckle is plastic like this one I'm already going to start to think less of it. What we're really interested in is stainless steel, a lot stronger and a lot more secure. The plastic ones, as we know from other Quick Tips videos, tend to succumb to UV over time. They become brittle. This little plastic pin in place here becomes weak and then catastrophe, just garbage. So generally when I look at these plastic belt buckles, no, stainless steel all the way, thank you very much. Next up you have belt sliders, sometimes referred to as weight keepers because the old days with the weight belt system you would slide a lead weight onto the belt and then slide one of these on afterwards to stop the weights from moving around on the belt. Uh, we use them for the exact same thing nowadays. We use a slider in combination with a D-ring to hold that D-ring in the position where you want it. You can also put a slider on your belt if you have an accessory like a knife or something that you don't want sliding around on the belt itself and always be in the same position just to help it hold that position on the belt. They're super cheap, super easy. Again, plastic or stainless steel, get rid of the plastic ones, complete garbage. Go with the stainless steel, and as you can see, there are two basic designs, one which doesn't have any kind of teeth, and then another one with teeth. I kind of like these better with the uh, nylon, webbing that we use because they tend to grip a lot better. These are kind of a hangover from the days when we used rubber weight belts. Um, they're a little bit wider and they would grip into the rubber really, really well. But with uh, nylon harnesses, nylon weight belts, these ones tend to uh, uh, work best. And you'll notice they're not exactly symmetrical. And this one even says on it, towards body. So you want to pay attention to which way you're threading it through and make sure that that slight curve in the design is facing outwards. And then you have D-rings here. D-rings should always be stainless steel. They are one solid bar of stainless steel that is spot welded together in the middle. And you want to watch that because that is a failure point. I have known people who have been using a DPV that's been clipped off to this as the towing point and they've actually broken the D-ring off and that's not ideal, obviously. Um, but nearly always stainless steel, they do come in different thicknesses and different widths, and you want to make sure that the width of the D-ring is compatible with the width of the nylon that you're using. Now, normally, most harness webbing is two inches. This is a two inch, but if you notice here, I've also got a one and a half inch D-ring as well, which could be used for a crotch strap, for example. Okay, now you'll notice that also I've got a couple of these that I'll show you, uh, which is a D-ring attached to a belt slide already. Um, they're kind of a cool design, but I do notice that these tend to be failure points and they rust out over time. So generally I go with just your good old fashioned tooth slider and a nice thick chunky two inch D-ring in combination like that. Um, also of note is that the D-rings come in a couple of different designs in terms of these being what we would call a flat D-ring and these would be called angled or bent D-ring. So as you can see there, let me give you a little close up. There's actually a bit of a kink in it. 
Ideally, you would be using these bent D-rings or angled D-rings for your shoulder straps here, which are allow them to sit really nicely, because remember, this is what a bolt snap bolt snaps to. So just having that little angle there and having them stick out slightly on your shoulders rather than lie flat makes it a lot easier to attach and detach your bolt snaps. So top tip on that one, uh, these flat D-rings for the waist strap, for the crotch strap are going to sit out nicely already and they don't need that little angled design. They're actually easier to find if they're flat. All right, let me show you how to assemble a D-ring real simply. I've got a piece of scrap webbing here that I've burnt the end off to make it easier to put through. And I've got my little tooth slider with the towards body side facing me. So what we're gonna do is push the webbing through from the back. I'm gonna take the D-ring that I want to apply, making sure it's the right width, and get that slider first side into the position where I want it. And then you're gonna fold it over and just pull that nice and tight. For my personal backplate and wing setup, I have six of these sliders, each holding one D-ring in place. I have four flat D-rings, such as this one, one on my crotch, one on my tailbone, and one on each hip. And then I have two of the angled uh, D-rings, one on each shoulder strap. So I promised you in the intro to this video that I would help you save money if you were building your first uh, backplate and wing harness. And I fully mean that. So let me give you a breakdown. You can buy these kits from major scuba manufacturers like Halcyon, like Apex, and they're gonna come with webbing with the A for Apex built into it and the H, the blue H for help, I mean Halcyon, uh, already in the webbing design. This is two inch nylon webbing. This is a dollar a foot. You need 12 feet to make yourself a decent harness and you can even buy a set 12 foot piece of plain black nylon two inches wide with a center grommet to go through and secure to your back plate for a dollar a foot, 12 bucks. You can buy a crotch strap of webbing, two inch webbing for about $9 that comes with two D-rings and two sliders already installed. So if you add then an additional four sliders and two bent D-rings and two more flat D-rings for your hips, you're looking at $42. I priced it out. I'll put a screenshot up there uh, of the cart that I actually priced out. That is a perfectly good harness. All you need to do is get yourself some scrap bungee, make a couple of loops for your shoulders to secure your accessories, and you're good to go for under 50 bucks easy. So when I see these packs of harnesses with the stainless steel and all that kind of stuff included and they're running like $99 or $125. I saw one for like $149 for a harness. I don't know who they're trying to kid, but take it from Big J here, you can easily build yourself a perfectly good harness for under 50 bucks. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, probably more information about harness hardware than you ever thought you could possibly want to know. But that's what we do here at Divers Ready. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it, you can do me a quick favor and return and hit that like button. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already, or share this video with your diving buddies. It helps us out to keep making this content for you. And let us know in the comment section below what other topics you'd like us to cover in Quick Tips videos. Most of these videos are directed by you guys and what you want to know and I'm happy to make them. So until next time ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your quick tips video for this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often. <laughs>